Let's discuss three problems from today's Code Forces round, starting with C. You can read it now or listen to my explanation. In my words, you have an array of n integer numbers, positive integer numbers. You need to make it a permutation of numbers from 1 to k for any positive k. You can delete one number and such operation costs c, and you can insert one number and such operation costs d. You need to output the minimal cost of making this array a permutation of any positive length of numbers from 1 to k. I simply consider two cases. First case is when we delete all the original numbers. If we delete all the original numbers, we'll have to insert at least one number instead, which of course will be 1. So the cost of such answer would be n times c plus d. In all other cases, you will leave at least one original number from the array. Let's sort the array and let's fix what will be the maximum number which remains. Let's say that there are x values in the array that are less or equal to this value. This means that we will have to leave those x original values from the array and we'll have to delete all the rest. And then, of course, to fill the gaps, we have to add a minus x more numbers. So this is a candidate for the answer. If you take into account such candidates for every possible value in the array, you will find the best answer. Let's look at the permutation. Read the array, sort. Initial answer is delete everything and add 1. Diff is number of different values that I've met. Here I fix an element and I only consider it if it's the last element of such value. I register it as a new different value and then I update the answer with such formula. Now for the problem D, you can read it now or listen to my explanation. In my words, we have snails on a tree. The tree has a height of h. Each snail has two attributes a, b, and it means that on every day starting from day 1, the snail will climb a meters and then slide down by b meters. But you don't know the h, and you have two types of queries. First type of query, a snail with parameters a, b claims that it climbed the tree in n days. If this statement contradicts the previous information that you adopted, you ignore this statement, otherwise you adopt this statement. And the second type of query is a snail with parameters a, b asks how many days will it take to climb the tree for it. If you can't tell the precise number of days given the information that you adopted, you need to output negative 1, otherwise you need to output the number of days. So let's consider which height on which day the snail will reach if it has parameters a, b. I will enumerate the days from zero. So on the zeroth day, it will reach the height of a meters, but then it will slide down by b, and on the next day, it will reach the height of 2a minus b, and then it will slide down by b more, and on the next day, it will reach the height of 3a minus 2b. So on the day i, the height that the snail will reach is a plus a minus b times i. So when a snail with parameters a, b claims that it reached the height h on day n, it means that this height was enough to reach a, but the height on the previous day was not enough to reach a. But if n is equal to 0, this is a separate case, then we just know that a is less or equal to h. That's all the information that we get. Because there was no previous day. To solve this problem, you simply maintain the constraints 
for what the minimal value of h can be and the maximum value of h can be. And when you get new constraints, you intersect your constraints with these new constraints. If you get an empty area, you ignore such information. Otherwise, you adopt this information. If you are asked the number of days for a snail to climb the tree, you simply try finding the number of days if h is equal to its minimal value and the number of days if h is equal to its maximum value. If the number of days is the same, you output this number of days. Otherwise, you output negative one. Let's look at the implementation. So this f simply returns the number of days it will take for a snail to reach the tree, if the height is exactly h. If h is less or equal to a than 0, otherwise it's actually h minus a divided by a minus b rounded up. Initial constraints on the height of the tree is from 1 to infinity. This infinity will be enough to be more than any possible valid higher bound. So here I read the new information. I turn the number of days into zero indexation. I try to form the new constraints for h. If the area stays not empty, then I adopt this information. Otherwise, I ignore it. When I am asked a query, I try setting h to l and setting h to r and see if the number of days is the same. I output this number of days plus one because of one indexation in the output. And the final problem for today is e. You can read it now, listen to my explanation. So in my words, you have a graph, every vertex has a number assigned to it. This number is AI. You can initially stand in any vertex which has a number 0 assigned to it. And then you can travel into a neighboring vertex if the overall number of different vertices you have traveled through is larger or equal than the number assigned to this vertex. You are asked to determine if you are able to visit the whole graph, starting from some of the vertices. The solution will be based on DSU. We'll unite a set of vertices into one component in DSU. If they can be all visited, from some of the vertices of this component. So some of the vertices in this component is zero, and starting from the zero, we can visit all of these vertices. Now suppose there were two components, and you have discovered that having visited this component, you can now travel into some vertex of this component. I claim that you can now travel through this whole component. Let's prove it. So suppose this was the vertex from which we had to start to visit this whole component, and this was the vertex, which also has zero assigned to it, where we had to start to visit this whole component. Starting from this component, we could eventually visit this vertex. And starting from this vertex, we could also eventually visit this vertex. Suppose the maximal value over all vertices on this path is A. And suppose the maximum value over all vertices on this path is b. Suppose a is larger or equal to b. But it means when we were passing through this maximal value on this path, we already had enough vertices visited to travel to all of those vertices too. If b is larger or equal to a, then we can repeat the same reasoning for this path. When we were traveling through this maximal value, we already had some of the verses visited, and those verses were enough to visit all of those verses. So, we can either reach from that vertex to that vertex, or from that vertex to that vertex. So, starting from one of those vertices, we can reach the other, and so we can reach both of those components combined. So, we have proven that if the size of the first component is enough to travel into some vertex of the other component, we can merge those two components. So the plan for our solution is to start with components of vertices assigned zero. When you can travel from one of the components into a neighboring vertex, for example, if there is a one on side to it, you add this vertex into a component 
or if it's another component, you merge the two components. And then we will just always look for such edge going outside of this component until we either can no longer find such edge or we have united all the graph into one component. To make it work fast, I will use an algorithm similar to Dijkstra or Prima's algorithm. I will always seek for an edge outside of my components, which leads into a vertex with the smallest number assigned to it. In order to do that, I will store all the edges outside of the components in a priority queue. And I will always try to go by the edge, which is the first in the priority queue. Of course, in the priority queue, they are ordered by the number assigned to the endpoint of this edge. But there's a problem with this solution because in Dijkstra and Prima algorithms, we always add the first vertex from the priority queue to the component. But in this case, it's not always possible. Sometimes the size of the component will not be enough to travel through this edge. In this case, we skip this edge for now, delete it from the priority queue, and move on to further edges. But at some point, the size of the component may become enough to travel through this edge that we steeped before. So when I unite two components in the DSU, I want to ping all those edges outside of those components again. I want to add them to the priority queue again, but this will work slowly. To optimize the solution, let's prove that we don't need to ping or check again those edges that go from the larger components. So suppose A is larger or equal to B. And suppose we have steeped some of the edges going outside of A. Let's say we steeped this edge and the endpoint of this edge contained a number x on it. We steeped this edge so the size of the component was not enough to go there. So x is larger than a. So x is also larger than b. That means that all the vertices in this component were considered before we considered x. Because all of the labels on those vertices are less or equal to b. So when we have considered this vertex, this component was completely built. As well as this component. because those labels are also all less than x, as they are less or equal to a. So both of those components were already completely built, so this edge was already put in the priority queue, and this edge also. And they also have labels on their endpoints smaller than x, so they will be considered before we consider x. So when we are merging the two components, if this is the larger component, it means that we haven't considered this edge so far, so we don't need to ask to check it again. We only need to put those edges into the priority queue again. To illustrate that, let's look at such case. We initially have such components, and we'll consider this edge and merge, this edge and merge, but then we'll consider one of those two edges. Suppose we first consider this, then we consider this and we steep it because two vertices is not enough to go there. But then we consider this edge, then we consider this edge and we merge the two components. So we have to update this edge. So we have to add this edge again into the priority queue. Because when we consider this edge, this component was not fully built. So we considered this edge before we considered such edge, even though it has a lower label on its endpoint. But this will be fast enough because each time when we put the edge into the priority queue, it means that the size of the component of this vertex was at least doubled because we merged the components of this vertex with some larger component. But the size of the component that contains this vertex can double no more than log n times. So it means that we'll put this edge into the priority queue no more than log n times. So the overall time complexity of this solution is m log squared. The second log comes from the priority queue, of course.
Let's look at the implementation. So this is simply the DSU, and in the root of every component in DSU, I store the full list of vertices in this component. This is just root with path compression. Uh, this is just a formula for the priority queue. In the priority queue, I will first store the label on the endpoint of the edge, and then the edge from this vertex to this vertex. So here I unite two components. I always hang the smaller component by the larger component, and I also go through the list of a smaller component, and I put it into the list of the larger component, and also I go through every neighbor of every vertex in the smaller component, and I push it into the priority queue again, and then I clear the list for the smaller component. So here I initialize the DSU. Initially, every vertex is in its own component. R is uh, the rank of the monster. So instead of A, I call it the array R. I read the graph. Initially, I put in the priority queue all the neighbors of all the vertices that have a label of zero. Then I check if such vertices do not exist, I output no. Otherwise, I simply take the first stage from the priority queue. I delete it from the priority queue, and I see that if the rank of the endpoint of the edge is less or equal than the size of the current component of the starting end, then I unite the two components, and I automatically push some of the edges that I need into the priority queue again. In the end, I just check that the whole graph is one component. If it's true, I output yes. I'll tell you honestly, I don't think this is the most optimal solution. I think you can make it work in N log N, but this still works, and this is still not hard to write, so I decided to tell my solution to you. That's it for today, thank you for watching. I remind you that I give private lessons on competitive programming. If you're interested, contact me on Telegram. Goodbye.